Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. It's been announced that David Price will meet Sergei Kuzman on the undercard of the Anthony Joshua and Alexander Povetkin fight on September 22nd. So this is quite a late addition to the card, just over a week out. What I'm going to do is I'll get to the press release... And then also I want to talk about Sergei Kuzman because a lot of fight fans won't be too familiar with him. He's a prospect at the moment. He hasn't fought too many guys of note, uh, but he does have a good amateur history, good pedigree. He's beaten Joe Joyce before. Um, and I'll show a little bit of that footage actually. Uh, but also want to touch on what's happening with the fight schedule. So we've got this late edition, but actually it's still looking a little bit thin. But let's rock into the press release first. So uh, headline, Price meets Kuzman on AJV vs. Povetkin undercard. Uh, the press release reads, David Price will take on Sergei Kuzman for the WBA Intercontinental Heavyweight title uh, on the undercard. Da -da 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 -da. Don't need to get through that. Price rocked former world champion Povetkin before succumbing to a stoppage defeat last time out at the Principality Stadium in Cardiff in March and knows it's his last chance saloon against the Russians' countryman Kuzman. Actually, I'll, I'll just intervene there. I think a lot of us would have thought it was last chance saloon against Povetkin. And then obviously he got thoroughly starched in that one. But he did sort of uh, make Povetkin uh, do a bit of a dance across the ring there with that big left hook that he did land on him. Uh, it continues, the Liverpool man is determined to prove that he can still mix it with the best in the heavyweight division on the biggest stage of all. And a win against 12 and Kuzman would rocket his name back into the mix. David Price says, It's all been a bit late notice, but I was training to fight in Belfast anyway. It means I'll have to squeeze in my sparring as the fight is only nine days away, but I'll come out all guns blazing on the night. It's just great. I got a huge buzz last time being part of such a big occasion. There's nothing like the feeling of a big fight night, and I'm excited to be part of another one. Opportunity knocks again, and I'm hoping to get some good support on the night. I was a massive underdog in the Povetkin fight. Kuzman isn't as well known, but he's serious, and they plan to have me as just a name on his record. I'm a banana skin for any undefeated prospect coming through. Going into this one, I'm drawing on all the positivity of my experience last time and the fans' reaction. People know when they come to watch me fight that it's going to be exciting one way or another. This time, however, I'm confident it's me who'll come out on top. All I care about is getting in there and taking him out. Uh, then it continues with a couple of the bits and pieces with the undercard and tickets, all that sort of stuff. Okay, so first off, I like this fight. I do like this fight. It's come a little bit late in the piece, but they were looking to land um, Kuzman a fight in this one. He's been sort of down as um, going to fight someone, but yeah, it's surprising that they've left it sort of this late in the piece to announce it. But um, that probably comes down to, you know, availability, money, but also Kuzman, he's rather dangerous. Uh, he's 12-0 at the moment. We'll get to his record in a second. But in terms of the fight itself, I like it. David Price, Sergey Kuzman, this has got entertainment written all over it. Um, so David Price, as he spoke about, you know, he wants to get in there when sort of he, he thinks he can be a banana skin. I guess some of those statements actually confirm David Price realizes that he's a gatekeeper now. Th those are gatekeeper comments that he's made. And at least he sort of realizes that, you know, that's where he is at the moment. But if he wins here, he can certainly get things back on track. Is he going to win? I'm not so sure. It's always sort of car crash TV with David Price. It's uh, sort of, you know, you never know what's going to happen from one second to the next with a, a David Price fight. You never want to miss it. I mean, even in the Povetkin fight, we saw that, you know, he got knocked down and then he um, sort of sent Povetkin across the ring and that sort of came against the run of play. And then, uh, you know, a, a minute later, I think in the next round, he was uh, stopped himself. He got sort of clipped with a right hook and then taken out with a left. So, yeah, David Price, I think he's he's up against it in this fight because Sergei Kuzman is no joke. So this guy, um, we'll go to his record now. So Sergei Kuzman, 12-0. He is listed at six foot four. I'm not convinced about that measure. Uh, 75 and a half inch reach. I actually think Kuzman's probably about six foot three. Um, he fought Amir Mansour last year. That fight was stopped on cuts in the third round. Uh, he certainly didn't look like he was sort of towering over Mansour, who's listed at six one. It, yeah, there was an inch or two difference, but it wasn't six four v six one. Did, yeah, I'm not sure about six four. But in terms of that fight, actually, uh, it was stopped in the third round because of cuts. But 
it was one of those fights where he hadn't actually sort of got a foothold. It hadn't really sort of heated up. Neither guy had sort of landed anything of note, really. Or got no, there was no ascendancy from either side. And we have a reference point for Mansoor, which came more recently. Philip Hergovich stopped him, and he was dominant throughout that fight. Uh, where uh, Kuzman certainly didn't have his way with Mansoor to any great extent. But um, the record, it's yeah, it's, it's like a prospect's record earlier in this um, career. It's it's not filled with a lot of huge names, but obviously there is some uh, journeymen of note on here. So you've got Zarati, Nascimento, um, Costa Jr. You know, a lot of these guys have fought guys like Anthony Joshua, um, Joseph Parker, Dillian White. There's a number of the, of them on here. Constantine Irich. So there's a few decent, well-worn journeymen that he's sort of getting in there and actually sort of taken out. Um, the faded Malcolm Tan, here's another one. And more, most recently, uh, he fought in April against Jeremiah Carpensi. The, the knock on Kuzman, because it's not a skill thing or a power thing, it's more a conditioning thing. He's a very fleshy heavyweight. He's listed here at 6'4", but like I said, I don't believe that. Um, but in terms of his... Um, recent fights uh, he's been you know as high as in the 250s um, 246 244 247 241 249 251 262 253 and when you see him he doesn't look like he's in the best of condition sort of um, a little bit in the, the mold of the Adam Kanowski or Andy Ruiz Jr. You know, he is very effective, but his conditioning could be better. And I think a lot of people will look at him on the night going, well, this guy doesn't look the business, but he probably will be able to do the business. But Price is right. It could potentially be a banana skin because David Price can hit hard. He can crack. David Price, um, he might have a chin made out of glass, but you know the guy can really sort of wind through those levers and land something of note, and um, guys feel it. I know Alexander Povetkin has come out and sort of tried to, you know, say he wasn't really hurt by Price and that sort of thing, but Price landed flush on him and he was able to send him across the ring, and some of that was a balance issue, but it sort of demonstrates that this guy can, you know, he can hit hard, and we know this but he can also be devastated himself. And I think Kuzman will, he will certainly be the most effective in those early rounds, and he's probably going to look to whip through David Price here, land something big. And I think it'll be something similar that he's going to land on Price that he landed on Joe Joyce. So about five years ago, the two fought in the amateurs. So Sergei Kuzman, quite a decorated amateur, uh, fought Joe Joyce. Here's a little clip of that, of that stoppage. I think there's some who would say that, you know, Joyce probably could have continued, but it is the amateurs. They don't really sort of muck around and take any risks there. But, you know, it was a really dominant and aggressive performance. It was a first round stoppage by Kuzman over Joyce, who, you know, was a decorated amateur himself and obviously went on in 2016 to win a medal at the Olympics. Kuzman himself, he um, turned pro a couple of years ago now. He's uh, 31. So he is, even though he's not well known amongst fans, he is actually, you know, in the prime of his career, similar to Joyce. So he's 12-0. and 0. The next year or two is really sort of make or break for his career. So this fight with David Price, it's important. He can really get a lot of traction from this fight. It's on a massive stage. So it's all here for Kuzman to do. So if he can come in here knock out David Price, he can really sort of, you know, put his name on the map a bit. He's going to get some eyeballs on him. People will go, okay, Sergei Kuzman, he deserves to be in the conversation of, you know, some of the top prospects. There's a number of guys right now who are coming through. I mean, you can think of the likes of uh, Daniel Dubois, Tony Yoka, Philip Hergovich, Nathan Gorman, Martin Bacoli. Uh, there's a few other guys, um, Serenko, uh, Plechko. There's some of these guys who've been getting a lot of headlines um, they've had some aggressive wins, they've good KOs, that sort of stuff. They're starting to get some buzz behind them. But Sergey Kuzman arguably deserves to be in that same conversation. And I can't forget Joe Joyce as well. Obviously, he's um, getting quite a few headlines, just recently signed with Al Heyman. But Kuzman is also with the same outfit that Alexander Povetkin is in. But he has been fighting in some pretty low-level sort of... Um, I think he was fighting in um, King's Theatre in Brooklyn. Uh, that was his last fight. Um, he he's been he's had some of these fights. So the Double Tree Hotel in in Ontario, 
the MGM National Harbour, Oxen Hill. He's had some of these fights where he's been a little bit off the radar. Uh, the forum in, I'm not even going to pronounce that one, but you can see what I mean. So obviously they're trying to build him up. He's a talented guy. They want to sort of handle him, bring him along the right way. And he's got a number of those sort of key sort of journeymen that you'd want to have on your record as you're coming through. But because of where he's been fighting and who he's been fighting, it's been largely off the radar. And he hasn't really built his profile up in the way that you might um, have wanted after a 12, you know, being 12 and 0, where there's a lot of these other guys, especially some British prospects right now, who are getting a lot of attention, a lot of fan interest. Um, whereas Kuzman, really, it, there's not a lot of buzz for him at the moment, but arguably he's in that sort of top 10 prospects coming through. He might even be closer to the top end of that scale, but the knock on him, as I said, it's the conditioning. Very fleshy guy. This photo here, just bringing it up, it's you know, it shows you know he can be in better condition. That was in his last fight. But in terms of um, the actual fight card itself, oh, it's yeah. So I'll just get back to um, so Kuzman and Price. I am picking Kuzman to stop David Price. Uh, I would I would think. If Kuzman's going to win, it'll be certainly in the first six rounds. If it goes any later than that, I'm not really, you know, who knows what would happen. But it wouldn't surprise me if David Price can actually land some work here. And Price is, you know, what is he, six foot eight? He's got the height and reach by a mile here. He will be able to touch Kuzman up. But it's when Kuzman gets inside, gets some work away, that's when he will do, you know, really present um, a danger to David Price. And if he's coming forward... If he's pressuring David Price, you know, is David Price going to fold like a deck chair on the Titanic? Possibly. We've seen it before. But in terms of the fight schedule, so on the night, we've obviously got the big one, uh, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Povetkin. Then you have uh, on the undercard, a Luke Campbell fight, Matty Askin versus Lawrence Sicoli. Uh, Kuzman, that has been updated for Price. Got another prospect who's uh, coming in. I, I believe this was a, new, a recent signing for Matchroom. But yeah, so there's five listed fights. So obviously this last one, it either hasn't been announced or it hasn't been added here. But usually the, these cards are a little bit deeper. Some of them don't always make the broadcast. Uh, but yeah, I was sort of thinking, well, where's the rest of the meat? It's a pay-per-view event. Um, you're trying to sell this to the to the world. Um, obviously, it's going to be on zone in the United States. I just thought this is a bit thin. I think for the Parker and Joshua fight, I think there are about eight fights listed. So we've got, you know, four that are locked in at the moment, possibly this fifth one, but where's the rest of the meat? I just wondered, is it a little bit thin here? Because, you know, no offense to Lawrence Sicoli and Luke Campbell, those are decent fights, but is that chief support material? Or is the Sergey Kuzman price fight, is that going to be chief support? Be interesting to hear, but also what is happening? Because I'm looking at this going, yeah, it's a little bit thin. But in terms of this edition, yeah, Sergey Kuzman, David Price, I like it. What do you make of it? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.